Well, I just want to welcome you here this morning. want to welcome those of you that are watching us online. Uh, we kicked off a new series last week called Forgotten Virtues. And uh, I don't know if you've ever driven through a town that, uh, that it just seemed like it's been forgotten, like it's been abandoned. Anybody ever driven through one of those towns before? Like it's, it's like a ghost town. You're driving through, you're actually seeing tumbleweeds crossing the road, and you see doors just flapping open, uh, open and shut, open and shut, and you're just like kind of wondering, where is everybody? Where's the, where's the life in this town? And I think in some ways, or in many ways, I think that's, that's, uh, that's exactly what uh, has happened to some of the virtues in our culture. Last week we looked at honor and, and what does honor mean and, and what does it mean to, to honor people and, and who deserves honor. And I just encourage you, I'm not going to repeat the message obviously, but if you were not able to join us last week, I definitely encourage you, definitely challenge you to go to our website, wiredalive.com, click on media and, um, and you can get our, our message. You could listen to it, watch it online. You could even download it free, uh, but definitely invite you to, to, to do that. We talked about honor last week. That was the title of the message. And this week we're talking about loyalty. We want to look at loyalty uh, this week because I believe that loyalty is one of those virtues that are forgotten in our culture. It's one of those virtues that we've just kind of pushed aside. It's one of those virtues that we just kind of put on the, on the shelf as a whole, as a, not just as a nation, but just as a, as a, as a world, as human beings. We kind of put uh, loyalty uh, uh, on the side, on, on the shelf somewhere. What is loyalty? Have you ever thought about that before? Like to some people, loyalty is, um, is where they're sticking with somebody through, through thick and thin. Uh, for other people, it's just where they've made a commitment and, and they're sticking with that commitment that they've made to somebody. But what is loyalty? When you think about it, what, what truly is loyalty? And we're going to do the same thing that we did last week where we looked at honor and what our culture says honor is. But God being the creator, Jesus being the creator of life itself, and Jesus knowing exactly how life works, God knowing exactly how life works, could it be that our definition of honor is different from God's, and we found that out last week. Could it be also that God's definition of loyalty and our definition of loyalty is a little bit different? So what does loyalty mean? Well, if you go to dictionary.com, it says that loyalty is faithfulness to commitments, vows, allegiance, or obligations, obligations, etc. So we have this idea that when, when somebody is being loyal, when you're being loyal to somebody, you're being loyal, uh, you're being faithful to the commitments that you've made. You're being faithful to the, to the vows that you've made. You're being faithful to any allegiance that you made or, or your obligations. Now, let me just ask you, and you just be honest with yourself, just like I got to be honest with myself. What commitments, what obligations, what vows have you made, maybe recently, maybe over the last several weeks, maybe the last several months. What commitments, what vows, what obligations have you made over the last several weeks, over the last several months? And have you fulfilled your commitments? Have you been faithful to those commitments, to those vows, those obligations that you made? And sadly, I know in, in my own life, there's, there's been times where I said, I told somebody I'd, I'd do something and I, I shared or I told somebody that I would be, be somewhere and I wasn't there. I, I didn't take care of what I told them I'd take care of. I, did, I wasn't at the place that I told them that I would, I would be at. And when we look at this idea of loyalty, when we look at this idea of, of faithfulness, to obligations and faithfulness to commitments and, and faithfulness to, uh, to our vows, how real is that in our own life? But then how real is that in our culture? See, like two people get up on a, on a platform and they vow to each other, I'm with you through thick and thin, I'm with you for the rest of our lives, and yet we have a divorce rate that's over 50%. So what happened? Like we made a commitment, we, we, we shared some vows, we, we, we promised to each other that we were, we were going to be with each other forever, but yet over 50% of marriages are ending in divorce. Uh, professional athletes, let's say professional athletes for, uh, for example, as far as loyalty goes, professional athletes aren't loyal to most or many professional athletes aren't loyal to a team. They're loyal to the dollar. They're loyal to, hey, who's going to pay me? Who's going to pay me more? Whoever pays me the most, I'm going on that team. And so there's no loyalty to even, even a team. There's, no, there's very little loyalty to uh, our, our job, our profession, where we work. 
And it's, it's kind of like, well, if, if, just, if there's just one, one thing that I don't agree with, if there's just, if there's just something that's, that's off. Now, I understand. I understand having wisdom, and I understand uh, making a job change. I understand that there are times where we have to make the switch. But if we look at our own life, and if we're constantly seeing, like, every couple of months, like, we're switching jobs, is it the jobs, the job that's the problem? Or is maybe there's something going on in me? And I think it's the same thing as it relates to a church. You know, if we, if we find ourselves going from one church to another, and I understand visiting churches and, and finding, trying to find that place that God wants you to be at and, and to be your home church because it's not just a place where you're going to receive, but it's a place where people are going to receive from your gifts and your talents and all of those things. And I get that. I understand that. But if we're seeing in our life where we're just going from one church to another, we call it church hopping. If we're going to church hop from one church to another, because in some ways we're kind of expecting the perfect church. Can I just give you the newsflash? There's no, there's no perfect church. A perfect church does not exist. And I will be bold and I will, and I will bust some bubbles here this morning. If you're looking, if you think that Livewire is a perfect church, if you think that I'm a perfect pastor, newsflash, we're not, I'm not. <laughs> we're not. This is not a perfect church. I make mistakes too. And, and sometimes, you know, because I'm task-oriented, sometimes I'll blow right by people because I'm so fixed on the task. And it's something that I've had to work on for years. It's something that I have to be aware of, that I've had to be aware of for years, not to blow by people and to make sure that, that, I'm, that I acknowledge people and, and say hello and, and those things. But it's easy for me to do that. Well, if you see me blow by you and you're thinking, oh man, I thought this was a perfect church, but yet he just blew by me. He didn't even say hello. He didn't even acknowledge me, didn't acknowledge my presence didn't ask how my week was and all of that. Listen, I'm just letting you know, I'm not perfect. And I'm not doing, I don't do it on purpose, but sometimes I make the mistake too. And sometimes I don't acknowledge people and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm just task driven and, and, uh, and, and, and I acknowledge that. And, and so if you're looking for a perfect church, you'll be hopping, you'll be church hopping for the rest of your physical existence trying to find that perfect church. And so the thing that that it has become very, very evident in our culture is that when we look at loyalty and uh, commitment being a part of that, being faithful to what we've committed ourselves to, I mean, that's, that's a rare commodity in our, in our culture. Like, that's a rare thing that you find, that people are committed to their job, that people are committed to somebody, that people are committed uh, in, their, in their career, and, and it's, it's a rare thing that we find. And I think that that's, I, I think that that's where we get that forgotten virtue of loyalty. And here's the other aspect that I, that I, wanna, that I wanna draw, uh, that I wanna look at regarding loyalty. Because I think in a lot of ways, we say, like have, you ever, like, have you ever heard somebody say, you have my word? You have my word on this. You have my word, I'm gonna follow through. You have my word, I'm going to, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take care of that for you. You have my word. And listen, I've, I've said it before and I've had to repent afterwards because I didn't follow through. But you, you, we've heard, you've had my word, you have my word, you have my word. And yet when it comes down to it, their word didn't mean anything. And I think that's another aspect of this virtue of loyalty that has gotten forgotten. And I think it's that aspect of where we think in our culture, in our world, we think because I've said the words, because I've, I've made the, the commitment with my words, because I've made the vow with my words, or because I have a piece of paper and I sign my name to that piece of paper, we think that the words that we said, you have my word, I promise I'll be there, I'll be with you through thick and thin, I'll stay with you forever, we think that because we've shared the words, we, because we proclaim the words, that that's loyalty, and it's not. See, the words without the corresponding actions, without fulfilling the corresponding actions, is not loyalty at all. I could say all I want that I'm there for you. I could say all I want that I'm with you to the very end. I could say all I want that I'm, that I'm with you through thick and thin. How many of our friends have said that? And when times got rough for us where we didn't have any more money to lend them, where we didn't have any more resources to give them, where we didn't have a place to stay for them to stay at, how many, how many times did, did, did those people that say that they were our friends, that say that they were with us through thick and thin, how many times, 
how many of them were still with us when we didn't have the resources, when we didn't have the finances, when we didn't have a place for them to stay? How many times did, did they stick around? Because a lot of people don't. Oh, man, you don't have money anymore? Oh, yeah, I'm out of here. Oh, you can't buy my lunch every day anymore? Oh, I'm out of here. Loyalty. We got this idea that loyalty is just, hey, I just, all I got to do is share the words, say the words. I commit myself to you. I'm with you to the very end. Here's my vows through, through, uh, yes, what is it? Thick and thin. Through sickness and in health. Till death do us part. I'm with you. But yet, what's actually going to show that I'm truly loyal to my wife is going to be my actions is going to be my faithfulness to those vows that I made, my faithfulness to the commitment that I made, my faithfulness to my obligations. And so could it be that as we look at our own personal lives and as we look at uh, what loyalty truly is, what loyalty really means, could it be that maybe we, we think that we fooled ourselves and, and, and just simply because we've been trained by our culture, we believe what our culture has said, could it be that we fooled ourselves into thinking that loyalty is just something, nothing more than the words that you say, those words of commitment, or just a signature on a piece of paper? Because I believe that God's got something more uh, to say about loyalty than, than, it just being, than it just being words. Proverbs uh, 20, verse 6, it says this, Many people declare themselves loyal, but who can find someone who is really trustworthy? Notice what it's saying there. Many people say, hey, I'm loyal. Again, I'm, I'm with you through thick and thin. I'm with you in, in sickness and in health. I'm with you till death do us part. I'm, I'm with you, boss. I, I'm with you all the way. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to you. I'm, I'm going to work for you, work hard for you. I'm loyal to you. I'm with you all the way. Now, again, I understand job changes has to happen at times. Sometimes there's a change in... in um, in uh, management, sometimes there's, there's a change in owners and, and the, same, uh, the same vision or, or the same beliefs or, or, just the, or, or even just things that are, that are not done legally may be the very reasons why we may switch from one job to another. But there again, I think we've got to ask ourselves, do we find ourselves just going from one job to another? Do we find ourselves going from one relationship to another? Do we find ourselves going from one church to another? Because everybody can say, anybody can say, hey, I'm loyal. I'm with you. I'll, I'll be faithful to every commitment, every obligation, every vow that, I, that I've made. Anybody could say that. Anybody could proclaim that. But really, are those people trustworthy? Really, am I trustworthy? Am I going to be faithful to those things? Because again, anybody can declare it. In fact, this situation, this type of situation happened with, uh, with the disciples, with Jesus and the disciples. And let me just give you a little bit of background. This is toward the end of, of Jesus' life, his ministry here on this earth. And, uh, and Jesus tells his disciple, uh, disciples coming toward the end here. He says, listen guys, I just want you to know, we're going to go to Jerusalem and, uh, and they're going to arrest me. They're going to arrest me, they're going to take me, and I'm going to, they're, they're going to uh, put me to death. They're going to punish me, they're going to put me to death. And, and I just want you guys to know, I'm, I'm letting you know this in advance. Every single one of you are going to abandon me. Every single one of you are going are gonna to deny me. Every single one of you are going to walk away from me. And, and Jesus goes on to, to, to share with them, but I've prayed for your faith. Uh, he was speaking to Peter and, and even the disciples. Just I pray for your faith that, uh, that it wouldn't fail you and that you would be restored and, and all of that. Well, immediately, Peter responds to Jesus saying, every one of you are going to abandon me. We pick this up in Matthew chapter 26, verses 33 to 35. It says, uh, Peter said to him, uh, uh, Peter saying to Jesus, even if everyone else abandons you, I never will. Now hold on to those words. Even if everyone else abandons you, I never will. Verse 34, Jesus replied to Peter, I can guarantee this truth before a rooster crows tonight, you will say three times that you don't know me. Before the rooster crows, Peter, you will have denied me three times. Jesus said in verse 30 or verse 35, Peter told him, even if I have to die with you, I'll never say that I don't know you. All the other disciples said the same thing. All the other disciples agree with Peter. Even if everybody abandons you, Jesus, 
You're saying that we're going to forget you. You're saying that we're going to abandon you. You're saying that in the time, uh, in, in the moment of, of, of just um, uh, the toughness and, and, and sacrifice and hardship that you're going to face, in that moment, you're saying that we're going to leave you. We're going we're to forsake you. We're going to abandon you. But we won't. I never will. I never will, Jesus. He looked Jesus square in the eye. And I believe this. And here's where, here's where it, it can get kind of foggy. Because I believe this. I believe that Peter had every intention of never denying Christ. I believe that Jesus and all the disciples had every intention. He was sincere when he said, if everybody else abandons you, I won't. I'll even go to the extent that Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I won't abandon you. But when the time came to put action to those words, what happened to Peter? What happened to the rest of the disciples? They did exactly what Jesus told them they would do. They abandoned him. They left him. See, I think we could have great intentions. And, and I think that uh, intentions are part of it. Like we're, we're moved in, in, in our emotions. We're moved with compassion. We're, we're moved to do something for somebody. We're, we're moved to stand up for somebody. We're, we're moved in those things. And, and that's great. Intention is great. But just because you have the intent to do something doesn't mean you did something. Just because you have the intent to say something just because it's in your heart and you have the desire to be there for somebody and to, and to help them through a situation and to stand up for them, to be faithful to your, to your commitments. You can have all the intention in the world, but if you don't fulfill it, that's not loyalty. And so here's Peter. He's, he's looking at Jesus, and, and he says, I'm, I'm with you all the way. But yet when it came down to it, where was Peter? Exactly what Jesus said. He denied him. Three, different, three separate situations. He said, I don't know the man. I don't know the man. I don't know him. I don't know who he is. And actually, the, the, the third time, he got so upset at the fact that people were accusing him that he, he started cussing. I don't know. I don't know him. I don't know that man. And then the rooster crowed, and Peter realized exactly what took place. And actually, the Bible says that him and the Lord saw eye to eye from a distance. And Peter walked away, obviously sad and and distraught and, and all of those things. But here's a situation where words are being spread, where they're being said, I'm loyal, I'm with you to the very end. I'm with you all the way. I'm, I'm committed to you. But yet, the actions show otherwise. The actions tell something totally different. Now, when you look up the word loyal, and, and depending on the translation, the, the Bible translation that you're, that you're using, more of your newer translations uh, of the Bible will use the word loyal, whereas your older translations may use something else. Uh, some of your older translations will use, and, and even your newer translations will use the word faithful. Uh, there's another word that the Bible uses uh, uh, for loyalty, and it's the word cleave, all right? Uh, we don't use that word too much more. Uh, I can't remember the day that I'd use the word cleave other than reading a Bible verse. But the word cleave, it actually means to adhere to. It means to be stuck to, to join together with something, with someone. It means to adhere yourself to. It means to come together with somebody. So here's, here's what God's talking about as it, as it comes to loyalty. Uh, we have this aspect of cleave that is, is, is being stuck together to somebody. I mean, have you ever just, uh, especially like something like super glue, I'm sure every single one of us has, has used super glue before. And have you ever gotten it on your finger and then put your two fingers together on accident and then you're like trying to pull it apart? And you're like, I mean, I, I remember one time that that happened. I can't remember if I was a kid or a teenager, but I remember one time that happened and I started freaking out because I couldn't pull my fingers apart. And I'm thinking, man, I'm going to be stuck like this forever. You know, I can't pull my fingers apart. And there, it was just that adhesive was so strong that it kept our two fingers, it kept those two fingers together or, or something that we were, we were sticking, whether it was on a wall or, or pieces of paper, whatever it may be. Well, this is that word. I mean, it's that strong. It's, it's not just, all right, Elmer's glue where you just put it on and you can kind of rip it off. You, you'll probably rip off some paper as well, but you can kind of rip it off of there. And, and that, this is a strong adhesive. And this is what God, this is how God defines loyalty. 
There's no disagreement as far as when we, when we look into the Word of God, and we'll talk about faithful in just a second, but when we look into the Word of God, there's no real disagreement from uh, dictionary.com or, or our, our dictionary, our, our uh, book dictionary, uh, Webster's dictionary. There's no big difference, but yet God's loyalty, and we'll look at this in, in just a moment, God's loyalty is a whole lot stronger than the loyalty that we've grown up with than the loyalty that our culture has established or our, our culture has adopted. There again, our, I, I believe this, and here again here is, is the forgotten virtue of, of loyalty. I believe that we've downgraded loyalty from what it truly is. And so here's God saying, you want to be loyal to somebody? You want to be loyal to me? Get stuck on me. Stay with me. See, how many times have I, how many times have, have you in our lives, I can think of many times where the times got rough, and it was easy for me to trust God in the good times. When everything's going great, when I've got money, when my truck is working, when everything in the house works, when my relationship with my wife is working, everything is going great, everything is awesome, fabulous, can't be better, and, uh, and then all hell breaks loose. And then when all hell breaks loose, the first thing that I do is I say, oh, well, I got I to gotta, I gotta take care of this. I got to do something about this. And it's the first sign of when all hell breaks loose that I run from God. I was stuck to God when everything was good. Just like sometimes our friends, they're stuck to us when everything's good. But now when you don't have money anymore and you can't pay for their breakfast, lunch, and dinner, then they're just like, oh, well, I'm out of here. Oh, yeah, I was with you when everything was good. You, God, I was, I was stuck to you. I was, I was with you all the way. I was, I was completely joined to you, God. I was stuck like super glue to you. But Lord, then all this stuff happened, and, and you know, I just didn't see your faithfulness anymore. I just didn't see that you were trustworthy anymore. I just didn't see that you were with me anymore. I mean, I know you said that you'll never leave me, you'll never forsake me, you got my back and all that stuff. I know you said that, but I just, I just didn't see it. See, we got to understand, again, that we live, we live in an imperfect world. And even though we're following Christ, and even though we're stuck on Christ, still bad things happen to good people, and still bad things happen to Christian people, followers of Christ, simply because we live in a world that is sin-infested. Wickedness, perversity, evil, people's, other people's decisions affect us, affect you and I. In, 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 in many ways. You know, decisions our government makes affects you and I in many ways. And so we live in this world where we do have a very real enemy. A couple weeks ago, we talked about Satan and his demons, and, and they are very real, and they are, they are very much out there trying to mess up your life, trying to destroy your life, trying to offer you things, trying to offer you things in your life and in my life that are going to ultimately bring destruction, that look good on the onset, but are ultimately going to bring destruction in our life. Bad stuff is going to happen. I mean, Jesus was real about that. He said, hey, guys, I just want to prepare you. All right? There's going to be some tough times. You're going to be persecuted at times. And you're going to go through hardship. But he said very clearly also, he says, but be of good cheer. Be encouraged because I've overcome the world. Be encouraged. I'm with you every step of the way. And even though things may get tough and it may get hard, I'm with you every, every step of the way and I will bring you through. See, the test of whether we're truly loyal to God and whether we're truly loyal to others is especially in those tough times. It's in the times where we're going through something tough, in the times where we're going through something hard. It's in those times that we truly show whether we're loyal. Because again, I mean, we could, we could be stuck to God. We could be stuck to, to a person an individual, a family member, friend, coworker, a boss. We could be stuck when everything's going great. But what about when things are going tough? What about when we don't agree with everything they're, do they're saying or doing? And I'm not talking about something illegal. I'm just saying another direction. What about in those times? Are we going to jump ship? Are we going to forget our commitment? Because when we do, that's when we've become, rather than being loyal, we've become disloyal. We've become disconnected. We've become disjointed to God or we become disjointed to others. That, friends, is true loyalty. 
Again, you'll find the word faithfulness that is used. Um, you'll find loyalty again in, in a lot of your newer translations of the Bible, and, and it's the word faithfulness. And there again, going back to dictionary.com, it said faithfulness to commitments, obligations, um, and, and those sorts of things. Well, faithfulness, when you look that up in the, uh, in the Hebrew, it means the hind part. That's a weird definition. It's the hind part. Have you ever, and, and especially like uh, maybe your kids, or, or if you've seen a, a, a kid's drama at school, or a kid's production at school, and have you ever seen a production that included a horse or like a cow, and they had the costume on, and, and you've, if, you ever, if you've known anything about those costumes, there's two parts. There's the front end, and then there's the back end, or the hind part. And if you ever watched it on TV, or, or you saw it live, everywhere the front part Every direction that front part was going, the hind part or the back part had to follow, had to be in agreement with it, had to be, had to be joined, uh, joined together with it. So if, if the front part was walking forward, that hind part had to know, okay, I'm, I'm walking forward as well. And I don't know if you've ever seen a, a production like that or seen it on TV, maybe America's Funniest Videos. I'm sure it's been on there a couple of times, but I don't know if you've ever seen that and then, but where both parts were going separate directions. And what ends up happening is either the costume will tear or, you know, if it doesn't tear, maybe one or the other trips up the, the other. You know, so if the front part is going forwards and the back part is going backward and, and maybe the front part gets tripped up or the back part gets tripped up. The point is this, is that this word faithfulness means the hind part, okay? When we're faithful, when we're faithful to God, when we're loyal to God, we understand that our place is the back end. And in order for us to truly be loyal to God, we've got to see the direction that he's going in and go in the same direction. But when we're disloyal, when we're, when we're saying, well, God, I think I've got, I think I've got a better plan. I think I, I've got a better answer. I think I, I know you're the creator of life and all of that, and, but I think I've got a better way of doing this. When we don't go in step with God, then what we're doing is we're actually just like that, that horse or that cow. We're going in a separate direction and we're going to tear that costume apart. And we can go in our direction. God allow us. God's not going to make you do what you don't want to do. God's not going to make you change the things in your life that he, wants to, that he wants to change in order to bring a full life in your life. He's not going to make you change. He's not going to make me change. He's not going to make us transform. It's, it's got to be our decision to say, okay, God, I know where my place is. And isn't that hard? I mean, honestly, Let's just be real about it. Isn't that challenging to have somebody else leading our life? We don't like that. We don't like having somebody bossing us around. I mean, God doesn't boss us around, but I'm just saying, in general, we don't, we don't like somebody that's telling us what to do. Somebody that is, that is out in front of us and we have to follow. I don't want to be the follower. I don't want to be the hind part. I mean, I remember just listening to, to kids and nobody wants to be the hind part. Nobody wants to be the butt. Nobody wants to be the butt of all the jokes. Nobody wants to be the back part. Everybody wants to be out in front. Everybody wants to be the one that's leading. Every single one of us, we have to, we have to, come, to come to grips with the, with the fact that we want to lead. We want to be out in front. But let me ask us something. Ask us, you and me. Let me ask us something. Who's better at the job of leading our life, you or God? Just be real about it. Just, be, just on it, honestly answer that. Who is the better leader? Who is the creator of life, you or God? Who knows the way life will, will truly work and, and the way life will truly operate? Who knows what will bring life to your life and to my life? You, do you know it better or does God? See, Job had to come to, the, come, to this, uh, come to this understanding. And you could read this in, uh, in, in the book of Job, but there's a couple of chapters in there um, where, where Job is just questioning God. You know, God, why this? Why this? Why this? Why this? And God just started firing questions one after the other. Job, where were you? Where were you when I created this orb? Where were you, Job, when, when I spoke these things into existence? Where, Job, can you, can you answer me a question? Can you tell me how all this stuff works? 
and, and I'm obviously paraphrasing, but Job comes to that understanding, comes to that realization that I have, I, I have no answer for God. I mean, God could throw the simplest question to you and me, like he did to Job, and we'd have no answer. And if Job came to that realization, and that it's, this is something that is passed down for us, maybe there's something that we need to acknowledge by the very fact that we don't have all the answers and we don't have all the solutions so maybe the best part for us to play is the back part if God has all the answers if God has all the solutions if God knows exactly what's going to bring life to you and bring life to me and bring life to every person on the face of this earth because he created life maybe our position maybe we need to just humbly Maybe I need to just humbly accept being the back part. It's not a bad place to be, especially when you have somebody that knows where they're going. It's not a bad place to be when you got somebody that has all the answers, that has all the solutions. When you got somebody, when things get tough and things get hard, that they know the direction to go in. They know what direction to, to take your life. And so I think we need to be, be real about that because it's only, it's only natural for us to try to come up with all the answers. It's only natural for us to try to come up with all the solutions. It's only natural for us to want to lead. But actually, our position, especially in our relationship with God, and we look at this word loyalty, is the back part. And here's, the other, here's a, a, another reality. Sometimes we've got to play the back part as far as in our lives, with, with, with our relationship with people. Sometimes at work, we don't get to be the manager. We don't get to be the director. We don't get to be the pastor. We don't get to be the leader. We don't get to be the one that makes the decisions. We don't get to be the one that's, that's uh, moving the team forward and, and, and uh, giving vision. And not to say that we don't have input, not to say that we can't throw in our, our expertise and all of that, but there is somebody that's got to lead the organization. There's somebody that's got to push the organization forward and, and all of those things. And sometimes that's not us. Sometimes that's not me. And, and for me personally, that's hard because I'm, I'm, I'm a leader, because I'm, I, I've got this D personality where, you know, I've got to be in control and, and I've, got to, I've got to be the one. And sometimes I've got to humble myself and say, no, this person is the leader. No, this person is, is making the decisions. And I've got to submit. I've got to come under their authority, under their leadership, under their management, under their decision. And, and sometimes we don't like that. And sometimes that's the very thing because it grates against us. It, 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 uh, it, it works against us to the degree that we just say, well, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm leaving this, this church. I'm leaving, I'm leaving this job. I'm leaving this career. All because... There was a little bit of hardship, all because there was a little bit of toughness, all because we didn't agree. And again, I understand. I get it. There are times to switch jobs. I get that. There are times to switch teams. There are times to switch churches. I get that. But we need to be truly honest with ourselves and see if we're just going from one job to another, one relationship to another, one uh, one church to another, one whatever to another. If that is something that is constantly happening in our life, we have very little to no loyalty in our, in our life. Because God looks at loyalty and he says, we're stuck. We're stuck together. My wife and I, we are stuck together. And the way that I prove that, the way that I prove that is in my life and through my life each and every day that I show her through my actions. I'm with you. Babe, we're going through a tough time right now. I'm with you. I'm with you through this thing. I'm with you through, through sickness and in health. I'm with you through the tough times and the good times. I'm with you till death do us part. I'm with you, and I prove that. See, if we look at this word faithfulness, and again, it means to be the back part. Somebody is leading, and we're following their direction. If we're truly being faithful to somebody... If we're truly being faithful to God, it requires of us to be full of faith. That's, I mean, when you, when you get down to what, what faithful really is, it requires that we are full of faith. Well, what's faith? 
See, because a lot of people believe that faith is just this blind thing. You have no evidence. You have no information. You got nothing to go off of. And so people will say, well, you know, it, it, takes, it, takes, uh, it takes faith to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. You weren't there. You didn't see it. It takes faith to believe that. And, and you just, you, I don't know, you just got to have faith. You just got to believe. That's not faith. See, faith is having enough information to make a wise choice. See, there, there is a bunch of evidence for Jesus not only living on this earth, but Jesus being crucified Jesus dying on the cross and Jesus being risen from the dead. There is plenty of evidence. There's plenty of evidence for for the Bible. There's a lot of evidence for the Bible. There's a lot of just, um, uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Archaeological evidence to support the Bible. There's a lot of evidence to to support the Bible. And so faith is not just, I I wasn't there, I have no information, I have have no proof, nothing to go off of, I just got to believe. That is not faith. Faith is having enough information to go off of to make a wise choice. See, I can confidently make the wise choice to accept Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord of my life. Even though I wasn't there 2,000 years ago, I can confidently say and and I can pray that prayer knowing that Jesus has saved me simply because I've got enough evidence even though I wasn't there. And see, there are a lot of things that we don't have all the proof of how things work. I mean, think of your automobile. You don't know unless you're, you're a mechanic, and even a lot of mechanics don't know everything about there is to, to a, a vehicle. You don't know everything uh, there is to know about your vehicle that you can say, oh, I know that it's going to work. I know it because I've got all the proof. No, but what you do have is you've got enough information that, has, that, that you can look at that you can say, oh, I know my truck will work. I know my automobile will work. I know that it's going gonna, it's gonna to run for me. You have enough information that tells you to the extent that you can make a wise choice and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive this vehicle around. This vehicle is, is reliable. You see what I'm getting at? Now, the point that I want to make in that is this. Think about, think about the reasons that you're loyal to somebody. Like, why are you personally, why are you loyal to somebody? Why does somebody have your loyalty? Why do they have your loyalty? Well, just like any relationship, you've gotten to know them. And as you've gotten to know them, as you've built that relationship, whether it's a working relationship, whether it's a a, a personal relationship, a dating relationship, whatever it may be, what you, what, where that started out with is that you started to get some information about them. And they got some information about you. And as you hung out a little bit more, and as, as time just took its course, and you got, to, you got to get to know them, you found that they were trustworthy. You found that the things that they said about themselves, the things that they talked about themselves, the things that they said that they, that they do, you found that they were, they were faithful to that, that they were, they were true to their word, that they were true to what they said that they, were, that they were going to do. They were trustworthy. So then when we find that a person is trustworthy, which we'll see by their very character, and guys, ladies, you're looking for somebody to, to get married to, and you're just like, man, I got to find the one, got to find the one, got to find the one, find the one. I'm just, Lord, I got to find the one. You're looking for character. I get physical attributes, that's great, awesome. You know, you got your list and that, that type of thing, that's cool. But the first thing on your list should be, what's their character like? What do they believe? Do they believe the same things that you believe? Are they going in the direction that you're, you're going in with their life? And more specifically, if, if you love Jesus and if your life is, is to follow Christ, are they going in that direction? Because anybody could say, remember the verse we read in Proverbs, anybody could say, man, I, I'm loyal. I love Jesus. I just love him. I adore him so much. And yet their life says something totally different. Their actions say something totally different. So how do you know whether you should go into a a business partnership with somebody? How do you know whether you should get into a dating relationship with somebody? Take some time to get to know them. Let that faith build up. Let that information build up that you could see time after time after time after time that they are who they say they are, that they do what they say they'll do, because then that translates into that this person or that organization is trustworthy. And then when that person is trustworthy, now I could be loyal to them. 
See, because you're more than likely, you're not going to be loyal to somebody that is not trustworthy, right? We build that trust by getting to know somebody. Here's a, an example of that Psalm 86.2. David, King David wrote this down and he says, protect me, talking to God, protect me because I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts you. You are my God. David was saying to God, you know, you're, you're my God. I've, I've got a personal relationship with you. You are my God. And I have come to that realization that because I've gotten to know you, I've gotten to see that you are trustworthy, and so therefore, I trust you. I've gotten to see that you're trustworthy. Every promise, God, that you've made to me, every way that you've committed yourself to me, every obligation that you have made to me, you have come through on your word. In fact, the Bible says this, that God is not a man that he should lie. And it says that the promises of God, the commitments, the obligations, the vows of God are yes and amen. The word amen means so be it. That's it. The promises of God are always yes and so be it. God will not lie. You can take God's word to the bank and David realized this. And so the reason why David could say, well, God, the reason why I can be faithful to you is because I have a relationship with you and that relationship with you has shown me, has proven to me that everything that you've said that you would do and that everything that you said that would happen in my life has come to pass. I've found you trustworthy. And it's the same thing in the relationships with our life. See, we we can be faithful to God simply because every promise that God's ever made, it may not come in the time that we want it, or we think that is the right time, but God's never late and God's never, God's never early. God's right on time. And every promise that he's made in your life and in my life, we can take it to the bank every time because he's not a man that he should lie. He's not a human being like some, from time to time where I've lied to somebody. That's not God. God only speaks truth. God only speaks, and, and what, what God says, the, the words that comes out of, come out of his mouth, is going to happen. It's, gonna, it's not going to return. The Bible also says that his words will not return back to him without accomplishing what he spoke them for to accomplish. Now, let me end off with this. 2 Timothy 2.13. It says, if we are unfaithful, and he's talking about God, if we are unfaithful to God, he remains faithful because he cannot be untrue to himself. Let's, talk, let's look at salvation for just a second. It's a free gift. In all honesty, a person can accept that free gift of salvation, which is just by faith with a prayer. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord of your life, you are saved. That's it. It doesn't say anything about works. In fact, Ephesians 2.8 says that it's not of works, that it's by grace through faith. By grace, unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. So here's the gift. God gives it to every, every person on the face of this earth. Now a person can take that gift, pray that prayer, and it's theirs, and they could live like hell the rest of their life. And God is still faithful to his promise that they will spend eternity with him. Now to us, we don't think that's fair. To us, we're thinking, well, you know, if a person doesn't, doesn't live a God-honoring life, if a, if a person doesn't, um, doesn't uh, walk according to the Word of God, then, you know, there, there's a chance that God may very well send them, send them to hell. If you go off of Ephesians 2, 8, 2, 8 and 9, and you see that salvation is a gift, and you've got many other scriptures, many other verses that back that up, then we can't sit there and say that a person will lose their salvation if they, if they were to live whatever, they, whatever life they want to live on this earth. Now, God will be faithful to that. But here's the thing, is that God's not just going to bless somebody and just bless their life, bless their life, when they want to go in an opposite direction away from the life that God has for them. Okay? Now, the reason it's, it's, it's good and it's right and it's just 
to allow God's word to change our life and to show us what this life on this earth is truly about and to, and to walk in that is simply because, number one, we could show our appreciation to what God, uh, the, the free gift that God has given us, but number two is because it'll bring life to us. It'll bring life to our relationships, bring life to our business, bring life to, to everything that's going on in our life. It'll bring life to us rather than destruction rather than corruption like a lot of the things in the in the world are are designed for like i said good on the looks good on the onset but is not all that great afterwards so the point being is this is that god will be faithful to his promises that he's made even in the times where we're unfaithful now flip that for a second in our relationships with other people in the times where they're unfaithful they may be unfaithful to us, but that doesn't mean that we can't still hold up our end of the bargain. Now, I know that there are situations that we have to break, break ties and, and that sort of thing, but the point that I'm making is this, is that if God does that with us, we should not be so quick to break ties with other people. We should not be so quick to break ties with a job, a career, organization, people, relationships, whatever it may be, we should not be so quick because even in the times where we're unfaithful, God remains faithful to us. And so even in the times where, now, I'm not saying be a doormat, I'm not saying be a, be a welcome mat, let people just walk all over you, do whatever they want to do, you could still be faithful to somebody and still keep your distance. You see what I'm saying? You could still be faithful to somebody. You could still be loyal to somebody and keep, keep your distance. Use wisdom, all right? And we have to have that wisdom in those situations to say, okay, you know what? This person has walked all over me. This person has hurt me over and over. I need to show tough love. Doesn't mean you're not faithful. It just means that I'm going to be faithful, but I'm going to be faithful from a distance. And just like God's not just going to say, oh, okay, you want to live like hell? I'll just keep blessing you. I'll just keep blessing you. I'll just keep blessing you. He's not going to do it. He's going to let you live the life you want to live. He's going to let you destroy your life if you want to destroy your life. He's not going to make you, again, do what you don't want to do. But at the same time, he's always faithful. He still loves you. And when you're ready to come back, he's right there with open arms, ready to wrap you up and love on you. And so think about that because that is loyalty. Loyalty is remaining faithful to the commitments and the vows. Loyalty are, is not words. Loyalty is putting actions to the words that we speak. Loyalty is being the hind part and knowing the person, God, that's leading, leading the way and following. Loyalty is being stuck, staying together through thick and thin, sticking with that person.